the opener. The uh, Young Bucks did their first job in over a year when they lost to Eddie Kingston and Penta to set up a tag title match next week on the show. The uh, match was awesome. Brandon Cutler is just the greatest. He goes to spray the spray, but uh, he misses, and so he accidentally sprays Nick Jackson. And he's such a geek, and he's such a lackey, and he's so worried about messing up that when he messes up, he freezes, which means he keeps spraying Matt in the face, and then he gets yanked off the apron. He's still madly spraying, and then next thing you know, the Young Bucks get beaten, spinning back fist finish. It was awesome. He's just the best. We had a uh, Ethan Page promo where basically what they did is they delayed the coffin match. And I think the reason they delayed it was because of the condo collapse. I think they figured it would be tasteless to do a coffin match next week. So it's going to be uh, changed at least a week. Uh, the storyline is it has to be in writing. The Darby will not touch Ethan Page in the week leading up to the match. So uh, that's the angle they did to do that. We had a, a Matt Hardy uh, segment, which set up Jungle Boy and Jack Evans. Jungle Boy beat him. Jungle Boy lost last week in the World Championship match, but they celebrated he is the first wrestler in AEW history to get 50 wins in AEW. So he got that big accolade here on this show. Then they did another deal to uh, set up the Christian Matt Hardy match. MJF promo. Announcing that next week he is going to announce the stipulations if Jericho wants a match against him, which of course also set up the main event which he won over Sammy Guevara. We had a segment where the Dark Order tried to volunteer Hangman Page to get a world title match against Kenny Omega, which made Hangman very, very upset. But then the Dark Order just pointed out, listen, we're behind you. We don't think you're afraid of Omega. We think you're afraid of failure. But we have your back, win or lose. And it got him thinking. Miro beat Brian Pillman Jr., as pretty much everybody expected. Uh, Britt Baker and Rebel versus Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero. This was a disaster in a thousand ways. The biggest disaster was an injury, and that is Rebel dislocating her kneecap as she tried to break up a pin. She couldn't do anything. They very quickly went to the finish. Luckily, it looked like it was a broken leg. It looked like it was a torn ACL. It looked like something horrible. And don't get me wrong, a uh, dislocated kneecap is no joke. But they relocated it, presumably. And uh, she was out drinking with everybody a couple hours after the show. So apparently she is fine, which is good. We had the MGF Sammy Guevara match, which was just a crazy match. The tombstone, everyone in the chat's talking about that tombstone. Uh, why did they have Sammy kick out of the tombstone? Why did... Listen, I'll talk about it more tonight, but if I put this match together, I would not have had Sammy kick out of the tombstone. I'm not saying you don't have to do the tombstone, but when they did the tombstone, MGF immediately sold his knee. He made a cover, then he sold his knee, and, like, they couldn't do anything for a couple of minutes. I would have had him do the tombstone, sell his knee, and be unable to make the cover. Because a middle rope tombstone pile driver, bro, that's a huge move that I don't think anybody needs to be kicking out of. And the knee gimmick that they did was a way to get out of making a cover. But they made a cover anyway, and I'm torn on it because the whole idea of doing a middle rope tombstone and making a cover and having Sammy kick out is because I think in their minds... This was not really the week for Sammy to be doing a job, but he had to do a job because they need to get this match out of the way because the next match is going to be, I guess, kind of the main event match of the Inner Circle Pinnacle Feud, which is MGF versus Chris Jericho. And they needed to do this match before they got to that one. They're going to do, I don't know how long, but probably weeks and maybe months of build to get to MJF versus Jericho. And I don't think they wanted to beat MJF on his way to Chris Jericho. That's why they did what they did. If you didn't like it, that's your opinion. You're welcome to that opinion. I can understand people not liking it, uh, but there you go. And then, of course, the show ended with uh, Jim Ross plugging upcoming ticket sales and saying there's nothing like WWE Dynamite Live, which, of course, had a lot of people freaking out. I'll talk about that in a moment, but first off, Mike, any thoughts on this show? You don't want to mention the video package at the end too before JR oh, said well, that. Oh yeah, we, we can get to that. We can get to that later. But people were they didn't care about anything except JR. <laughs> so we could talk about their great video package after a while. 
hey, a lot of wrestling's future on display last night for real. I mean, I thought Jungle Boy's win over Jack Evans was fantastic. I thought the way they structured that match was perfect. And I think if you didn't think Jungle Boy was on a different level last week, uh, the reaction to him this week was perfect. And I thought that match was perfect. Brian Pillman Jr., Looking a lot like his father coming back there against Miro before he ultimately loses. You know, even in a loss, it was a victory, I think, for Brian Pillman Jr. And then MJF and Sammy. MJF can talk about being the now, but he's also the future of the company. And Sammy Guevara, obviously, is going to be his generational rival. They worked great together. They did everything. I'm not sure what you break out for the next match because, like you mentioned, you know, the top rope. Uh, pile or the middle row pile driver, 630s, uh, Sammy, <laughs> an incredible performance. Again, not to take away anything from MJF, but Sammy was just perfect last night in his role. So a lot of good stuff they had last night. And, and Tuesday and Wednesday night, I know Tuesday night did not do good ratings for NXT. I'm sure we're probably going to get into that. But regardless of those ratings or not, at least for me, wrestling nights are Tuesday and Wednesday for sure again. So regarding Jim Ross, I have uh, I have many things to say about this. I'll try and get it done before the break. Here's here's the deal, everyone. I have a degree of sympathy for Jim Ross because I just two days ago was doing a show and I was talking about how hot it was up here, and I said that it was 85 years old in this room. Okay, <laughs> this stuff happens. Every day on this show. I do a lot of shows. I talk. It's live. I make mistakes all the time. I make so many mistakes that, like, it, I think this is what happened with JR, the way that he did his apology. I hear about it later when I go on the board and people are just, I, I, Brian said this, blah, 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 blah. Dude, things, you make mistakes live on the air and it's live and it's done. So I have a degree of sympathy for JR because of that. There are there are two types of anti JR fans that I've seen online, okay? And I I see these types of fans all the time whenever I talk about AEW. <laughs> there is there is the fan that they just do not like AEW. They don't watch it, they don't like the idea of it, they pretend like they watch it, they pretend like they think the show is terrible. They just they're going to do what they do on the internet and they're going to be trolls, okay? There are people like that about Jim Ross. I don't think they watch the show, or some of them do watch the show, and they just, they do not like JR, and he makes one mistake, and it's like, the guy should be fired, blah, 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 okay? There are also fans that I believe are very honest in their criticism of JR, and these people point out, listen, I don't, it's not, Actually, one of our, uh, uh, someone here, I think DJ Convoy uh, made the point here. My problem with JR, DJ says, and I'm paraphrasing him, is it's not just one mistake about WWE Dynamite. He believes that JR is regularly making mistakes. He calls Kenny Omega the WWE champion. He mistakes people's names. He doesn't know somebody's name. And his argument, and you are free to believe this if you are sincere about it, is that I don't think that JR is right for this job. There are people that do not believe that JR is right for the job, but they also believe that JR has something to, to offer AEW, and they will say he should be doing the backstage sit-down interviews with Andrade. You tape it. If there's a mistake, you do it again. Blah, 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 blah. If that's your opinion of Jim Ross, you are more than welcome to have that opinion. I, like I said, have a little bit of sympathy because I make mistakes all the time when I do this live. Everybody does. I have listened to this noise like 300 times in a row, dying laughing. And I may go do that after the show is over because this noise that Seth Rollins played sounded exactly like the mummy's voice that they recreated on National Geographic. Scientists were able to mimic Nessie Amun's voice by recreating his mouth and vocal cords with a 3D printer. It allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what?
it allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> I don't know if I can do it one more time. <laughs> it allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> the top comment on YouTube, I love when she says, ah! <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.